Good afternoon, everybody. Can you, can you hear me okay? This is working okay. Um, my name is Miguel Sihuko. Um, I'm joined here by, by two great Filipino authors, uh, Danabel Gutierrez here on my left and Angelo Sarge Laquesta here on my right. Um, thank you all for coming. We'd, we'd like to particularly welcome um, uh, our, our, our representatives here uh, from the Philippines um, and, and, and our advocates for us uh, in, in the Filipino community, His Excellency Ambassador Alfonso Ver, um, the Consul General of Dubai, Renato Duanes Jr., and the Consul General of Abu Dhabi, Marford Angeles. Um, and I'd like to welcome all of you and as well thank the Emirates Literary Festival, uh, Isabel Abulhul and her team for having us. It's about time we had a big Filipino yes. contingent considering yes. this. There, there are ten of us. There are ten of us apparently. Yes. Ten, ten Filipino there are ten of us. Yeah. Yes. Clap for that. Yeah. 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 Filipino representation this year. Like you could really, like literally really count good. them just on the fingers of your hands. Yes. Ten. And hold them. Well, okay. given the, I mean, the fact that I think isn't we're the second largest, uh, uh, minor, third largest mm. here in in the UAE. No, um, it's about time we had more True. representation since True. we're such great storytellers. Agreed. But first, let's introduce ourselves a little bit. Um, since I'm, I've been tasked with being the the moderator as well as a panelist. Unfortunately, Alexander uh, Chavez, who's who's a great writer um, from Dubai, she couldn't make it for for personal reasons. So the last minute, they asked me to step in and sort of be parang uh, si playing coach, parang si Jaworski. But so you call si I would I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> But Jaworski was only as good as his team. Um, so I'm Miguel Sihuko. I'm a writer from the Philippines, um, from Manila. I, 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 although I grew up during the Marcos dictatorship, um, we, my family left uh, and we lived in, in Vancouver. Uh, and then after the, the family was ousted in, in, in shame um, in 1986, we moved back. And um, so I went, I, I studied in, in high school in Cebu went to university in Manila, and then worked in Manila for many years. And I've been here as a professor <coughs> of literature and creative writing at New York University Abu Dhabi. I'm a novelist, and I, I've worked as a contributing opinion writer for the New York Times as well, writing mostly about Filipino politics. Oh. Hi. <laughs> please, please clap for all of that, okay. though. Come on, New York Times. <laughs> I am Danabel Gutierrez. I am a writer, a poet most of the time. <laughs> um, but my second, my third collection, which was launched earlier today, has short stories. So I'm kind of moving to the, you know, longer narratives. I've been living in Dubai for 19 years. I grew up in uh, Cairo, Vienna, and Muscat. Uh, I was born in the Philippines, but yeah. So a lot of my work deals with locus identity. <laughs> and, that. and this is her uh, <laughs> yes, her collection, <laughs> Tears Across the Earth, which is fabulous. I highly Thank recommend you. it. Thank and you. she'll be reading a little bit from yes. it uh, in a little bit. Uh, I'm Sarge Laquesta. It says Angela. My writing name is Angela Laquesta. It's also my passport name, but people call me Sarge. So you can call me. Everybody calls me Sarge. Uh, <laughs> Why Sarge? I, I, yeah. it, it comes from the Beatles. Actually, oh, Sergeant, Sergeant Pepper's, Pepper's Lonely <laughs> Hearts Club Band. So okay. I have a brother named Kite after Mr. Kite. So <laughs> okay. it really paints a picture of how entrenched we were in colonial mentality. No, so and I grew up. Your parents were hippies. My parents were hippies. <laughs> Love that. Hippies. My, Love my, that. My, my, my dad was a bit of a gardener, if you will. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You like yeah. that? So um, yeah, I grew up in Manila. I, I work in Manila. My wife and I. My wife is a writer as well. Uh, we, we work and live in Manila, so uh, I write, I, I love the short story form, so I've written many books of short stories. I've also written a novel. Um, I write screenplays as well and essays. So uh, back home, I'm the president of PEN Philippines, which is one of the oldest write, writing organizations in the Philippines. It was founded by F. Chanil Jose, who passed away over the, just last, two years ago. Two years ago, Two years yeah. ago, yeah. Um, I also... Uh, what else do I do? That's it. <laughs> well, you write have a day job. Yeah, I can write screenplays. Poetry and I write screenplays and, and stuff like that. And this right. is my his wife latest is book, book, Joy, which is amazing. I, I, I'm enjoying it, devouring it. 
Um, and you'll also be reading a little bit from it today. I'll be reading too, a little yeah. bit from it. You'll be reading from I Was the President's Mistress. Yeah, uh, yes, it's, it's my and, latest. Uh, this year. <laughs> yep. Being a fan of uh, Dovi, Dovi Beams back then, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's a beautiful book. I've read it. And Thank you. It's fantastic. Thank you. So today we're just going to make cuento. We're cuento. just going to hang out yeah. and talk. I was even saying that if only, you know, um, we're, we're, we, we love being here in, in, in Dubai, in the UAE, but if this was home in the Philippines, there would be San Miguel beer and chicharron Chichar. on the table and yeah. we just make cuento. Yeah. Si, same, um, maybe. Yeah. But <laughs> now we have books and we have water. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but I guess the first question that I have for all of us is, why do we write? Why mm. do you write? What's, what's the mm. point of writing? Mm. Um, <laughs> we were talking about this in the green room and I was asked this earlier today. Um, I write because I tried to quit and it wouldn't let me. <laughs> um, and that's literally, like I, I have a friend in the audience who I cry to and I say, I want to quit writing, I want to quit writing because it's so hard. Mm. And then she told me, okay, go ahead, do it. And then <laughs> she, she was like, so what are you going to do now? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to write, I'm going to still write. Um, I feel like, for me, writing has become something that I use to process thoughts. Like, I can't uh, mm. process what is happening outside of my body. I have to think about it and then write it um, before I can fully understand it. I don't know. That's the same with you guys. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. That works. Yeah. I think I write, it, it's weird for me because I can never imagine myself, I could never have imagined myself not writing. I grew up in a family of writers. My father was a screenwriter. He actually quit his day job to become a writer, which is the worst thing you can do. Um, he, he wrote <laughs> movies. He wrote a movie called Working Girls. No, <coughs> cancel. He, he wrote that movie. And <laughs> we grew up in that kind of environment. My mother taught uh, at Ateneo, the same yes. school we went to. My mother taught in school. She, 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 she uh, has an MA in, in, in literature. So we grew up in that kind of environment where books were really the way you took in the world. And writing was the way you expressed yourself and yeah. contributed to the world. So the question of why was not really a question. It was just, why do you write this instead mm. of that? There no. you go. I often wonder, <coughs> why do I write? Because it's, it's painful, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I'd write, you're indoors all the time. You, know, mm -hmm. you, you just become pale and, and yeah. hunched over your desk. <laughs> People hate, end up hating you. you people know? end up yeah. hating you because they there don't you like your book. Yeah. They, they blame yeah. you because they think it's whatever. Or... You make people cry because you're poor. Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> so Mika, why do, why do you write? <laughs> I write because our history as Filipinos has taught us that writing, that books and that mm. stories have the potential to change the world. When I think of you know, the first great Filipino novelist who comes to mind is Jose Rizal. Yeah. Of course. You know, who wrote to talk mm -hmm. about who we as Filipinos could mm -hmm. be outside of the Spanish mm -hmm. um, uh, conquerors, how we could... He, he talked about their corruption, he made fun of them because, you, you know, after 300 years you couldn't get rid of the Spanish. They tried all these uprisings and so what he decided to do was he decided to make fun of them. Mm -hmm. He decided to satirize them. Mm -hmm. And there was great <coughs> value in that and people were inspired mm -hmm. by that, no? So much so that the Spanish shot him, as you know. You know that's why he's on our money and you know, <laughs> we have memorials to him. And that, to me, is a really great example. It's mm. I think we have a distinction of being one of the very few countries that have, have a writer as a national hero. Mm, I mean, yeah. It's very weird. And why is, he in a, why, why is that? Not just because he was a martyr, mm. but because he wrote about what we Filipinos yes. could be. And we saw it as a sign are. of protest mm -hmm. rather than... Yeah, true. Taking up arms, it was really uh, the way to mm. engage mm -hmm. the yeah. dispensation of the authority. So I believe in that. Mm. I believe in that potential. I, I, I don't know, not only do I write, I also teach writing. Right. Because I believe that to have a voice is to have a vote in the future mm. of your community, mm. of your country. Mm. Um, the stronger you are, the more confident you are to be able to write about mm. the problems, to tell people, our leaders, you know, this needs to be fixed. This is, there are injustices here in our community and in our country. That is powerful. And, mm. and that's why I try to teach the, the skills that I have. Mm. And that's why I write. Mm. Mm. So, but I guess the question then, logically, is who do you write for? Mm. Right. That's a very uh, mm. sort of 
that's a key question for Filipino writers now, mm. I guess, and for us on the panel, because we, we're, we're coming from different positions. So yeah. I, I, not because we chose those positions. Huh? Mm. I, I, I live in Manila. So if you ask me who I write for, mm. I keep wondering to myself whether I write for my fellow Filipinos back home mm. or fellow Filipinos everywhere, mm. no? everywhere I meet. I still wonder no? because primarily I write for myself. No? Yes. But I write for myself as a mm. Filipino. No? So, yeah. In fact, allow me to speak Tagalog from time to time. It looks no, like no. a fil fairly yeah, yeah, yeah. Filipino person. No, no if, if, you're, if you can't speak Tagalog, just ask the person next to you. <laughs> make a friend. Oh, make make yes. a friend. Ask the person next to you. We're super friendly. We're super friendly. Ask, We're super ask friendly. any of the 36,000 Filipino friends you might have. Right? <laughs> so in, anyway, parang, di ba, parang, yeah. nagsunod ako, sinusunod ko para sa sarili ko yun. Yes. Di ba? Right Pero alam so. ko, aware ako, oh. na Pinoy ako na nagbabasa at Pinoy ako na nagsusulat. Pag sinunod ko para sa sarili ko to, may intindihan may intindihan din ng kapwa Filipino ko no matter whether this position is no matter where they're writing it from and i think this festival is a really great sort of example of that no i write for myself but all of a sudden like i have an audience here no? well then why do you write in english is one question that's a, that's the thing that i have no control over no? right and i like to think that and it's not a defensive no no uh. english is a filipino language I like yeah, that. I think I like uh, that. Oh we, we don't have to explain why we, it mm. is. It is, no, uh, it is a Filipino language, mm. and it's by chance that I, I, I know how to write in Filipino, mm. like prose. No, but when I write screenplays, Tagalog, yeah. Tagalog uh -oh. the characters uh -oh. speak Tagalog. Right. So I consider the, mm. both English and Filipino Filipino languages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean we've been we were writing we've been writing in English Philippine English. It is for over 100 English. years, yeah. Yeah. since the, the time we were a colony under the Americans. No? Right. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, How about you, Dana Um. Uh, well, I write, again, also for myself. Um, and, well, I feel like I exist as a writer. For, yeah. And why I continue to exist as a writer and why representation is important for me is because yeah. of the people who are here. Yeah. So for a long time while I was growing up, I didn't, eat, being a writer was not an ambition because I didn't see Filipino faced writers, you know, where mm -hmm. I was, where I was. Um, and so my existence as a writer now, I still like to write, obviously, better like mm -hmm. the noble, the noble thought the of big, me. The big, the big, oh, the big, I know. It's para makita ng mga bata na nandito that are, kasi the, the diaspora of the Middle East is very, it's malaki, madaming mga Pilipinos. UAE na lang. Um, it's the original ko. diaspora. It's the original Filipino yeah. diaspora. Right? So, so, ako na lang, ganun din ako mm. halos lumaki. So, I'm, I'm existing for them. Yeah. For them to see na, oh, pwede pala. Mm. Pwede pala itong mangyari. I can be a writer. Mm. It's not, you know. Because when they can see it, they can be, representation is very important. Yeah. And Miguel, speaking of representation, not, not to lead the, yeah, yeah. I really wanted to ask Miguel this yes, because yes. you really led in terms of when you won that, the, the Man Booker Prize. Oh. No. The Man Asian. Yeah, Man Asian. Yeah. Yeah. Clap for that. Um, you really, um, no, and, and it's a, it, it's you, a you can't deal. downplay this achievement because no. it's an achievement for yeah. Filipino writers everywhere. Of course. No. Did you feel like, oh yeah, this is, like, this is why I write and uh, this is a new voice for me and an identity, you're, you're carrying an identity. Well, thank you for, yeah. for that. Um, for, for my first book, Illustrado, I, I, I won this prize, but I wasn't the only one who was also on the, the long list. Uh, Crip. A short, Crip Uson, oh, Crip another there. great Filipino writer, yeah. was there. Um, I, I think on the lo long list was um, Lakambini Sitoy. Yes. Right? Um, so the Filipinos, we, we are always representing ourselves on the global stage yeah. in whatever it is, whether it's boxing or writing mm. or, or Billiards. whatever. Billiards. Billiards. Exactly. Billiards. <laughs> That's right. True. <laughs> Weightlifting, you know. Um, but uh, the reason I write is not so much for representation, mm. Mm. It's, it's for participation. Oh, okay. I, I, I write to mm. participate in this conversation about the, the issues right. of our time. Mm. Um, I also write as protest. Mm. I like that. You know, I, 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 I come, I, my, my father was a congressman. Mm. I, I come from, I was born into a privileged background in the Philippines. Um, we lived in the U.S. during the dictatorship because times were really bad and we're such a poor country during the martial law. Mm. Um, and it was dangerous, so we moved to Canada and that's why I speak the way I speak. 
like many Filipinos, like millions of Filipinos abroad. Um, and my dad always wanted me to become a politician like him. Mm. Become a lawyer. Actually, become a movie star so then you can become a politician. <laughs> so now that you've well, failed... That is you, what happens. <laughs> so uh, now that you're a failure, Miguel. <laughs> In his eyes, yeah. How does it feel? <laughs> I feel liberated because I'm able to still participate yeah, not yeah. in government and politics, yeah. the way he yeah. was trying to be as, as, as a leader, as a representative for, for the second district of, of Iloilo. Mm. Um, I tried to not represent, I, I tried to participate about mm. these ideas. So in my books, you know, it's I, the first book, Ilustrado, was 150 years of Philippine history, mm. you know, told from the point of view of mga privilege, mm. mga elite, because I believe. Or elitist, I should say, not mm. the elite, naman. But <laughs> because if we're to understand the people who are in power, mm. we need to look at them very honestly mm. and frankly. Mm. And because I was born into that privilege, I'm able to kind of expose or talk about it very honestly. And I figured if I'm going to criticize, I'll criticize first myself right. and the people around me. The second book, I Was the President's Mistress, is, is a satire <coughs> of Philippine mm. politics today. So it's, it's a mix of all these different politicos and the mm. different people in power. Because like, as a Filipino, as, like all of you, like all of us here, I think we've grown really frustrated mm. at the politics at home, at, at, at the reasons why we have to leave our country, leave our home to come work in the UAE and, and, and right. be, be right. away from our families. And sometimes you get to this point where you're so upset that all you can do is make fun of mm. the people in power. And that's what... I was the president's mistress is about. So to me, it's not representation because who am I to represent the Filipino experience? I'm just mm. one voice among so many. Mm. Um, each of us have valid stories and perspectives, mm. including me, I mm. think. So I, I, I would not ever be so mayabang to say I represent and this and mm. that. I mean, mm. I got but lucky. You do. Well, you we do. each do. Yes. Not I don't represent any more uh, than others, any more than yeah. any other writer. Just because I won a prize. Yeah. That's, that's why I, I want to pick up on that participation uh -huh. and <clears throat> sort of direct it to you, mm -hmm. Dan Well, no. No, no, seriously, yeah. Yeah, because one of the coming from your idea of participation is quite important to understand and realize that the cuento ng OFW, the story yes. of the Filipino diaspora, uh -huh. is the contemporary story of the Filipino. You know, all of the, all of the protests, the hurt, the harm, mm -mm. the pain. Mm -mm. The, the sadness is rolled mm. up into that story of the mm. Filipino diaspora. Yeah. And you yourself are a participant in that. Yes. Of being part of yes. it. No? And, and it's guess, such a great moment for, for, yeah. for the diaspora to be finally be able to speak for themselves and yes. write for themselves, yes. I should say. I think we mean the same thing, but yeah. we're using different words. Sure, yeah, For of him, course. it's like oh. participating, and for me, it's like representing. Mm. Um, but yeah. yes, it is participating, because mm. who, is, who is talking about the OFW experience? Or who is talking about my experience? I code switch in three languages. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of that. You mga mga batang lumake outside of the Philippines. You're talking about the second generation yes. Filipinos, and this uh -oh. is quite important also because I've observed. You mm -hmm. know, this is our role right? as writers. We just sit back and yeah. observe also. Yeah. You know? So whether we're participating or representing whatever, we're, we're also observing. So mm. you know, the Filipino diaspora has also changed in complexion. Mm. We can, we, there was a time when we were all laborers and we couldn't right. write, we right. were empowered to write mm. about our experience. So there was a huge lack. I think it was represented in the in Philippine cinema. Mm. You show a lot of, right? I watched Dubai. My first encounter with Dubai was too. Dubai the movie uh -oh. with Claudine <laughs> Barreto. No? It's one of my favorite Terrible. movies. <laughs> Claudine, shout out to Claudine. So, uh, and Julia. So, uh, <laughs> they're related. So, um, going back now, yeah. oh. parang because the second generation is so much more empowered, they're, yeah. they're more educated, they're more capable, and they're participating more within the fabric of whatever society they're in. Uh -huh. They can now have a voice and a real yes. sure voice like you yes. have, right? Do you feel yes. that? Nick? I, I feel that. And I think <clears throat> with every generation, like now, I, I meet people who are like, what, Gen Z? Mm, yeah. Are um, you, you're Gen Z, right? No, I'm a I'm millennial. Sorry. So, uh, you look like a Gen I'm Z. old. Oh, thank you. Gen X style. Uh, Gen X style. <laughs> that's how the Gen X do it. You yeah, know. we Gen X, yeah, we don't know. Roll, no. That's how we roll. No. You're all Gen Z to us. The Gen Z, I meet them, like the Filipino, like, I meet them and I'm like, oh my God, I have hope for the future. You guys are so yeah. bright. 
Yeah. You guys are so, yeah. I mean, to, I hate the term, but they're so woke. And yeah. cool. And cool. And like, yeah. and like they and just, they know. Worldly, yeah. They know they're ish, <laughs> like, and they're not afraid to talk about it. Just like, yeah, and they have style. They have style. They have style. They have that style. too. That's part of it. <laughs> and, and not just writing, the but yes. photography, oh, filmmaking, yeah. music, uh-huh. yeah. music. Oh, yeah. But their opinions as well of how the world should be and how the world is right now versus mm-hmm. how it is right now, how it should be. It's very like, ah, yes. May pag-asa, may pag-asa po. May pag-asa tayo sa bagong generasyon. Yeah, I, I often think that, okay, my first book was Illustrados, about the Illustrados in the late 1800s. No? The, mm. the middle class, upper middle class, rich Filipinos who had the opportunity to go study in the States and in, in Europe and came back and participated in the revolution, like Rizal. Mm. Mm. No, but us now, I think this, the, 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 the Filipino diaspora, the Filipino experience, which is global, that's the new Illustrado. Yeah. We're learning yes. different ways of living. Yes. We're learning that, you know, wow, this country a, manages this things mobility. well. It, it's, mobility. Yeah, oh. we, we look at, we learn from different countries, mm. and we come home and we, we have the potential to bring back these ideas Mm-mm. and these experiences. Yeah. But before we move on, maybe we can share some of our stories from our books to, to the audience. Would, sure. Would you guys be okay with that? You want to hear some? You want to yeah? hear? Um, yeah. If you buy, if you buy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 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 Yeah, I always say you don't have to read my books; just buy them. Buy, yeah, yeah. please. Okay, so I, I, you. please go ahead. Okay, so because I'm the visitor here, they're letting Uh-oh. me lead ahead. But I want to say that Joy, uh, my novel, no, it came out. People keep asking, but why is it Joy? There's a real secret to this. Joy really it stands for Chicken Joy. <laughs> it really does because the story is about a young advertising guy who has to pitch to a big fast food chain. And the model is really Chicken Joy. Di ba pag may nagbukas sa Chicken Joy, pag may nagbukas sa Jollibee, ipila ka, tapos iiyakabang kumakain ka. In fact, it's my mission. No, no, I mean it. It's, it's, my, it's my internal mission to go to every Jollibee, where I, wherever I am in the uh-huh. world. And it's a beautiful experience. <laughs> huh? wow, okay. It's a beautiful experience. And now, it sort of reflects the Filipino experience. At Jollibee, Filipinos used to, only Filipinos used to line up and eat it and enjoy it. And the joy for them of eating Chicken joy was very special and very Filipino. Now the whole world is enjoying it, right? It's a different kind of joy now. But this novel is not about that necessarily. <laughs> no, so I'm going to read from you know, uh, the pitch. No? Okay. A big number one in yellow on a black screen. Remember when we were number one? I do. That was seven, ten years ago. In other words, that is now merely part of our history. Will anyone remember this 20, 30 years from now? Yes. Old people will be wistful and nostalgic for the fading past, remembering things that young people will doubt it ever happened, or simply not care if it did. Ito ang hiru ko. Ito ang hilig ko. For our guests, one of the senior brand managers raises an eyebrow at the word, my bad, over in Hangzhou. This is my hero. This is my hilig. Yes, ma'am, sir. Another raised eyebrow, this time of pleasant surprise. This word is italicized because it is untranslatable. Precise, purely Filipino. This is what they want. Ito ang hero ko. Ito ang hilig ko, I repeat. This is what they've always needed. Something to lead them. Something to unite them. Next slide, please. Again, a field in yellow. We pull out to reveal it is the center of the Filipino sun, now surrounded by three stars. Now the blue field and the red field, field, our flag. We pull out further. The flag graphic becomes fluid fabric with a sheen-like taffeta rippling in the wind as it is waved by a fully animated hero. And then three storyboards, the first thrilling, the second tender, the third grand, each completely without dialogue, without food shots. Just a boy or a girl singing a song, just a song, just like the one my father wrote for Teddy Yap, the owner of Hero himself. But this time, three songs, one for each island group, each in a different Filipino language, each speaking to the heart of the Filipino in us. Whether we may be in the archipelago, in the world, launch date, 12 June 2012, Philippine Independence Day. The audience is open mouthed. Open mouthed. One June, one June 12 is less than three months away. I stare unblinking at them at the teleconference camera eye. This is where the difference disappears between the big agency and the small, because it depends not on an army of sycophantic account managers or a band of or a bank of expensive analytical tools. It all depends on one person knowing what they're doing and knowing your brand. And that's me, Lucas Letrero, only son of Ariston Letrero, composer of the original Heroes March. 
We are frozen, resisting the palp palpable temptation to applaud, to cheer, to stand and shake my hand. Next slide, please. Money needs money. The last section is introduced by a black slide with these words, expectedly met with coolness. And then the build. Money needs money. Teddy App, CEO, Hero Corporation. The quote is from last week's stockholders meeting. I look squarely at the black, unblinking eye of the teleconferencing camera, attempting to exchange with it a look of confidence, relief, affirmation, acknowledgement. I was that kid. Remember me? I want you to be proud of me. I turn over the deck to our media strategist who reads out the media mix and the budget allocation across free TV, radio, print, out of home, digital, social, and search. His tone is dull and even and therefore reassuring. An assistant's phone buzzes. She picks it up and taps out a reply. This means the next agency is waiting outside. All pitches must end on a high note. I look at the presenter display on the laptop screen. There are barely two minutes left. Time for the big guns. Next slide, please. Black. Except for two words, digital crowdsourcing. Friends, I say, allow me to leave you with the most innovative and groundbreaking component of our campaign, designed to run alongside all its other elements, gathering global attention and participation, and providing powerful fuel for the rest of the campaign fuel, period. This is what digital is all about. Clean, powerful, unerasable, unforgettable, eternal energy. Next slide, please. You the next slide, what happens is like, the next slide is, is, is the Jollibee scandal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it. So, guys, I'm not going to tell you what the scandal is. <laughs> Number one, you all know it. Jollibee scandal. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> you can tell that you're a screenplay writer because the cadence of your sentences is like very speech like. Well, I was an ad guy, so this is how we present our material. Okay. You know? I try to be uh -uh. excited about your own uh -uh. stuff, but you're really dead inside. Uh -uh. But also. <laughs> But also Love a poet that. as well. Yes. I felt that. I, I can't call myself a poet because I'm married to one. So, you know. <laughs> but there, there's a poet sensibility in the yes. book also. You know, I'm, 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 thank, I'm, you thank you for that. Thank it, you for that. It, 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 it's, it's, there's a gentleness in getting into the story. Um, and, and there's also this trust in the reader as well mm -hmm. with, with the details, with, with the musicality yeah. of it, um, both of, of what it represents and, and, and in the writing. It, it, it's really an extraordinary book, Saj. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, do you want to read? Okay. Or? Okay. I don't know what I'm going to read, though. Mm. Uh, this, you just launched this book today. Yes, so I did. It's quite fresh. <laughs> Congratulations. So, uh, everything you read will be... Everything you read will be fresh from your heart, so okay, let's, let's have it. Let's do something multilingual. This poem is called Retaso. It's after Pasita Abad's painting. Uh, okay. Retaso. This is all of me, stitched, delicate lace and mess, left of center, puncture. Punit na hindi mapunuan, dayo sa gilid at napapaligiran. Patuloy ko pa ring hinahanap kung saan ako lulugar. Ancestral patterns to decken. Ich versuche zu verstehen und ich möchte verstanden werden. In akong iniwan, tatanggapin mo pa rin ba ako kapag oras ng umuwi? Patatawarin ba ang paglayo sa gutom at kamatayan? Baon sa balat ang pamana? Unable to be excised or exercised. Every footstep followed by spirits. In dreams, sa alaala, sa pangarap na tahanan, when I cling to your thigh with questions, please don't respond with fire or freeze. I think I should have known. I can find answers elsewhere. I'd love to hear it from you. Do not wish me more eyes, less mouth, less tongue, sharp. Tell me what was, help me imagine. Between my teeth, im abendrot, fil sabah, what can be. Sa pag dilim, must I burn from yellow to red to blue to find my way else to be light. Either way, strike the match, set me ablaze. It's beautiful. <laughs> I've always, I've always admired how much sensuality there is in, in, your, in your work. 
And shall we talk about it? <laughs> Nagpapasunog na nga ako. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, uh, the, the fact that you use different languages. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you just mentioned that you code switch. I code switch, yeah. It's very Filipino also to code switch. Mm. It's quite Filipino to code switch. To speak a different language to your employer. Yeah. Mm. Speak a different language with your friends. Yes. With your friends. Yeah. And also to, to people who work under you. Yes. No? Yes. Uh, like even our maids have maids. They yeah. say, you know, and so, yeah, yeah. so they code switch a lot and it's, oh. it's part of our fabric of society. I used to stop myself from doing that. From code switching. From code switching. Sure, I used yeah. to stop myself, yeah. especially from writing in Filipino, because sure, yeah. I did not feel Filipino enough. Yeah, that's, that's so And I felt so like the real Filipinos were going to come out and be like, aha, so so no game kita. <laughs> but you are a real Filipino. I, just say, I am a uh, real Filipino. We, we, we like all you are, have right? a passport to are. prove yeah. it. Yeah. That's all the are. thing. But I mean, we have such a richness of our culture, yeah. of all the different backgrounds and languages and experiences from all over the world. I find that a lot of a lot of times people try to exclude you from being yeah. Filipino when they just want you to be quiet. Yeah, you're not part of this conversation. That's a kind of good oppression, also. No, yeah. kind of exclusion. The thing is, because I get it from re- other Filipinos, and I don't. I know they meant well or whatever, however they meant it. But they're like, "Ika yeah. naman Filipino, Arab ka na, yeah, European ka na." Or just throw that book of yours at them. Make them, <laughs> make them buy it first, no? Make them buy it first. Yeah. I want to say, you know, but I, seriously. Even during the pandemic, I went to Baskin Robbins and I was wearing a mask and I had long hair. I had pandemic yeah. hair. Yeah. You know, it was long and. We all had tail. pandemic hair. No, I had long hair. Yeah. yeah. And, and so yeah, I go do. to Baskin Robbins and, and the lady behind the counter is Filipino yeah. with, her, with her friend, with yeah. her colleague who's also Filipino. And, you know, I, 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 she goes, Hello, ma'am. And I said, <laughs> Is that happened to me in, in London? Para, I was trying to look. Said, but you try to look. Uh, sophisticated, yeah. parang, uh, man of the world. Yeah. Tapos, pagpasok sa London, sa, sa this store in London, pogi. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I go, I, 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 hello sira. ma'am, and I, hello, can I have one uh, cookies and cream ice cream? <laughs> Ay! Uh, lalaki I, I, pala! A chichi. Man pala, he's uh, a man. Chichi. Lalaki pala. And I said, oh, lalaki ako. Ay, Pilipino pala! <laughs> Kala kong liba, ibang lahi. <laughs> So it's Do- so double, hard to double fit and, in. Oh, double, yeah, I know. Like I don't belong. Uh, no, Miguel. Um, speaking of uh, code switching, mm. no, your 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 novels have always been linguistic. Mm. You know, I, I like to think that the the heart of a novel is it's a it's a linguistic exercise, especially yeah. the Filipino novel. Mm. It's a it's a linguistic uh, feat, mm. I should say. Part of, of course, it's other feats too. Mm. But uh, what do you think of that? And but. I guess you're going to read something sure, also, yeah. that, that speaks to that, right? I, I try to be, I, I, I like to play with language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. English is my sharpest tool. Sure. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm always trying to innovate. Um, going back to the question of who do you write for, I write for whoever likes my work. Okay. Not everybody does. Fair. It's, it's sometimes very challenging. Mm-hmm. My mom always asks me every time I come out with a book, she says, I'm so proud of you, but next time, can you write something easier to understand? But to me, it's like, well, if I love it and I understand yeah. it, who am I to say that others won't? Mm-hmm. You know, it's, I, so I'm not going to try to, sure. I'll write to whoever likes my work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll share this. This is from the, the, the first chapter, the first line of, of the book. Um, it's a story of Vita Nova, who's a um, celebrity Instagram in- influencer, um, who was the mistress of the president, of I was the president's mistress. She wants to write a celebrity tell-all memoir about her relationship with the president. So she's talking in, a, in an interview to the guy who's going to be her ghostwriter. Okay. So the book is a series of transcripts of interviews. So this is the first one. Um, and she was a minor character from my first book, Illustrado. She was this, 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 a woman of ill repute. Okay. And, and I, I thought, you know, I, I always felt bad about portraying her that way. And I felt bad about how the male characters in my okay. book portrayed her. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I thought, okay, for my next book, I'm going to let her have okay. her own you give that voice. voice. Mm-hmm. Invite her to have yeah. her mm-hmm. voice. So this is the first line. This is how it starts. I know you're wondering, yes, it's true. His birdie is thick, as he's always saying, but like a thumb is to a finger and hard to, fi- hard to find beneath the paunch and hair that make a nest for it to rest on its two eggs, or repose if metaphors more politically correct read the pitutois of powerful men. His is bigger than you'd guess, smaller than he thinks, and would prove his downfall, obviously. On his lap I'd, on his lap, I'd lay my head and talk to it. Hello there, little sir. 
You look endearing. Why do you quiver with such rage? At attention, it resembled the speechifying Mussolini, like in the photos in the biographies the president left by the toilet in my CR. Did you know that we spend a life's total of 90 days on the can? Did he admired men so great we know them by their initials, JFK, LKY, FDR, the kind you'd never imagine on the porcelain throne. Though most of all he respected Hitler, the brilliant and the tragic, he said, whose one name was enough. But it was in my lover's name that I believed truly, because he believed in me and let me lead. Between two fingers I'd make little FVE march and dance and sing the national anthem, falsetto vibrato, and peck it on the head, declaring, Viva il Duce! When the president laughed, he looked like his dashing old self from the Technicolor screen. Vita, he'd whisper, my life. Touching my face with fingers smelling of Marlboros and Brill Cream. Touching my, up, uh, caressing my closed eyes like a blind lover wishing a farewell. And I'd sing, Viva President Fernando Valdez Estregan. Sorry, TMI? Just thought you'd want me to start at the most intimate. Guys are the biggest gossips, don't deny. Because knowledge is power. Time the world knew every juicy detail, especially my side, instead of all that cyber bully bullying by the Nandotards with their fake news, that I'm the tool of the Liberty Party, that I'm the lesbian lover of the lady senator Lucy Lontok, that we're all in cahoots, adding oil to her old corruption accusations, orchestrating this impeachment together, because of course. I've never claimed to be the sharpest tool in the shed, but we all know I'm the shiniest, and that triggers them. Little old me and my 22, my 20, 0.2 million Instagram followers. If politics is showbiz for ugly people, then in politics, my imperial beauty will change the mother-loving world. In a couple of weeks, I, oh, you know, testify. And from the closet, the skeletons will sashay. So keep that recorder pointed my way, because here we go, Vita Nova, hashtag no filter. Welcome to her celebrity tell-all memoir, our setting, a sweating, heaving country where the future is always promised and men act like boys, and women are punished for not putting up with it. The time, ever now, the plot, a lost lass, rises from the ashes, a desperate assassin brandishes a pistol, a government is set to fall to a scandal everyone calls Sexy Sexy Gate. Among the players, a flawed dreamer who boxed and acted his way to the presidency, his Koran-toting nemesis in the Senate, a horny bishop, a cowboy turn, turned warlord, an American naval officer offering a way out, a washed up reporter redeemed by one last scoop, a poor little rich boy dying with his dynasty, and, of course, a high school sweetheart gone cray from decades of disappointment. Juicy enough for you? It's got legs, right? <laughs> Viewer discretion <clears throat> is advised. Nice. The sort of Thank you. Contemporaneity na of voice. Mm. I Especially love that. for a Filipino yeah. writer. Uh -uh. Sometimes seen as already a subversive act not to talk about the present. Yeah. And there are 13 characters, yeah. 13 voices okay. here, from the yeah. president to uh, yeah. an Australian DJ who's a complete misogynist uh -uh. to her OFW um, sweetheart from, from Angeles City. Uh -huh. Who, who was really disillusioned with his life mm. in the Middle East and how his life worked out for him. When you write in the first uh, person, do you like, think you have to like, embody that? Because my question is, yes. you have 13 characters. Kamustaha naman, okay ka lang. I'm not a schizophrenic, I think. Are you what? okay? What did you say? What? Sorry? Huh? <laughs> I'm not a schizophrenic, and neither am I. <laughs> neither am I. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, no. I, I had to inhabit. Uh -oh. I think a lot of writing is, you know, we, we I, I write opinion pieces mm. about Philippine politics, so and yes. I read a lot about right. other people's opinions. So I thought I'd write a book of all these different people's opinions uh -huh. about Philippine society, Philippine politics, mm. the world, all mm. of this. Um, and so you have very terrible characters there. Mm. And I, I didn't want to judge them mm. because I found that it became parang na, Propaganda, mm. like me judging them. I was looking at them through mm. my perspective. Mm. So in the end, I had to let them be who they are, as terrible as they are, mm. because I think there's something really tender, important. Well, mm. tender, but also important, yeah. vital about mm. us seeing terrible people. Yes, yes, and 100%. the reader judging them. Yes, saying, "Wow, yes. this is terrible." Yes, mm. yes. No? 
Like you have high in mulang and then let them judge. No? Yeah, so you have yeah. a corrupt uh, uh, governor, Rolex Aguirre the mm-hmm. third. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, y- y- and I, I wanted to kind of expose these mm. different people that in the my names life. alone. No, right? no. <laughs> <laughs> I have a yeah. nerd question though, in in terms of style, why two uh, exclamation points? Is there why two exclamation yeah. points? Vita Nova. Uh, titled this. Okay. Is it tabloid? Ah, okay. She felt that one was one exclamation point was too little and okay. th- three was too much. <laughs> mm. There you go. She she you know she has some taste. She has some know, taste. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but um, w- maybe we can open it up to some yeah. of the audience questions because we've course. only got about fifteen minutes. Yeah. Now. We have a question okay. over here. So you've spoken about representation, participation, and observation. They would only be as effective as having readers, your readership. So my question is, how do you build your readership, and how do you engage with your readers? That's a great question because I think we question. all approach yes. it differently. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, the millennial. The millennial <laughs> approaches it differently from us. The millennial Gen will share her work on every social media platform or however way she can share it. Um, because I believe that, so like as a poet, oh my God, I'm going to talk like a poet. <laughs> um, I write my words and then I let it fly and I hope it lands. That's always like the hope, right? Um, what I believe in poetry is that it's not mine. After I write it, it's no longer mine. It's looking for another host. It has to land somewhere else. So in order for it to land somewhere else, it has to be shared. It has to be read has to be heard by someone, and that's how I find my readership. That's how, how I found my readership. Um, I read my poetry in, you know, cafes here. <laughs> so, yeah. And you? I, I, when I was living and writing in the Philippines, um, <clears throat> I felt that there were opportunities to publish in the Philippines, but I was really upset or frustrated that it was so hard for Filipino writers to be read all over the world, mm. internationally, even though we're writing in English. So I went and I studied in, in the US and I lived abroad um, trying my best to get to know agents and publishers, trying to find access as a Filipino writer um, because weirdly enough there's so few Filipino novels coming out, more and more than there are now, but back when I started writing, maybe about yeah, 15, 20 years ago, there are so few, maybe one or t- one every year. Yeah. Out of 250,000 titles that come out in English in the U.S., there would be one Filipino. Mm. So I thought, you know, I want to I wanna mm. bust in. And I also knew that... Sorry? <coughs> they are. Yeah. Yeah. They are They're here. They are. Yeah. Or oh, maybe sold out? Sold out. I didn't buy them. <laughs> I saw them, I saw them, Kanina. I, no, they're, I, I they're, saw they're, them. Yeah. They're there. Um, so I just, I wanted to... Um, have a seat at the table mm. um, as a writer who happens to be Filipino. Mm. And um, so I kept publishing, trying, trying, trying. And then the only reason I, I got published was because I won this Man Asian Literary mm. Prize in 2008 after so much rejection. Um, and thankfully, that got me published and got me in, translated into languages. Mm. So I got very lucky. Um, but it could have been Kripuson, it could have been the other mm. Filipinos, or anyone. It's, and in writing, you just keep on swinging and, until finally your, 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 your bat hits the ball and maybe you'll, you'll, you'll get on base somehow. Um, yeah, it's how do I reach, how do I reach readers? I, and now, thankfully, my work is, public, is taught in universities, in high schools. Um, my work is, I'm told, according to my mother, uh, and others, my Amazon reviewers and Goodreads, that it's hard, it's tough, it's, it's, not, and it's not a beach read. <clears throat> you kind of have to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to prepare for this, I'm going to focus on this, I'm going to commit to this. But um, that's why those readers who, who like, I hope there will be enough of those mm. who, will take those to, who will take that challenge with me. So it's a challenge to write the book, so mm. I don't see why it shouldn't be maybe a challenge, a worthwhile challenge, hopefully. To, to read them. I'm going to pick up on what Miguel said about, you know, uh, having a bat, right? Uh, I, I'm lucky enough to, have pl- to be able to play several games at the same time, you know. 
when I write my work, my, my novels or my short, my novel, my short stories, um, I know that I'm playing a long game, and I'm happy with that. You know, I'm I, I'm okay with my. It's a different perspective. No? I'm okay with having my book sort of do a slow burn in history, and you know, you know, the the largest read book, the, the most popular book in Amazon, is not the current bestseller, but it's the Bible, right? Mm. Because they sold, sell one copy every year for like. 300 years, right? Something like that, no? That's, that's, the, that, that's an old book. It's an old book. It's an old book. <laughs> I, I hear it's a good book. But seriously. Uh, that's what they call it. A good book. It, yeah. But seriously, <laughs> the I, reviews uh, are I'm good. able to play the long game and I'm patient mm. that way when it comes to my literature, my, my writing. In that sense, I don't need to play to an audience. Mm. I can actually afford to play to posterity. Mm. I'll play for myself, mm. right? But I, I write screenplays as well. And whenever I write a movie, I'm, I'm writing a couple now. I know that it's going to connect to an audience, and I make, I write it so that it connects. It connects, it entertains, and I'm lucky to have a father who knew how to connect, and I watched him connect. And he, he chose writing films because he knew it would connect rather than writing books. Hmm. But I understand, you know, I understand that, that I'm completely invested in literary writing. You know, uh, Screenplay writing is one world, it's a, it's a great world, you know, uh, it's fantastic because you get to explore different ways of doing things, but I'm completely invested in literary writing, and by completely invested in it, I understand that it'll take a while for me, uh, whether, or not, whether or not I have an international publisher or not, you know, I'm also lucky enough to have a sort of international pu pu publisher, but I'm, I feel that I'm lucky to be, be able to play several games, you know, and I'm not so, like, I'm not so, I have to be read, you know, I want to do this, you know. Um, I think that uh, just like, and I, and I want to connect this belief to, the, to Filipino culture, you know, to Filipino culture, Filipino literature, food, for example, right? Even if it takes us 100 years to be appreciated, to be read by our mm. own people or by other people, it takes us 200 years, I'm okay with, I'm okay with that. Let's play it out, you know, mm. let's play it yeah. out. Uh, you know, if I don't get appreciated, but my grandchildren do, or you know, the younger generation does, that's fantastic. We have to play it out, and we have to put faith in our own process as a culture. Meaning, we have to put faith in our product. Mm. Keep producing it. Mm -hmm. Forget people who say you're not mm. Filipino, diba? Forget people who say you're yeah. not allowed to write this yeah. or write that, right? Just keep. Yeah. I guess you know. And it's it's quality, diba? It's not uh -huh. quantity. It's we, I guess we're all here because we like to read. We, we, we like books. And yeah, the investment is also on their end. No, parang, yeah, yeah it's, uh -huh. it's, we know that if I wanted to have my message or be heard by tons of people, I'd have a TikTok account. You know? And that would be my medium. Yeah. But I, I don't have social media even. Um, but a book, if I can just have one person, because you, the connection is deep mm. through books. Yeah. It's a really intimate thing, reading. Mm. And so that's why I believe in it. It, it, may, it might be much fewer than mm. a TikTok account or an Instagram mm. feed. But I, I think it's lasting on a deeper level mm. with mm. as many people as possible, hopefully, eventually. Do we have other questions? Oh. We have uh, one here and then one there. Uh, oh. You're first, and then here after. Uh, yeah. Hi. Um, so um, as as I was uh, sorry, um, when I was uh, on my younger years, I was originally I wanted to become a writer, but um, we talked about like being the earlier generations, the younger generations, and um, sorry, am I making sense? <laughs> but, You're making um, great sense. Yeah. So. Um, well, I guess what, what what advice would you say, or like, what are your opinions on parents who say that? Um, you won't get, uh, you won't earn any money writing because, like, I think most of Filipino parents I know we're kind of open to it now, but like, as a young person telling like elderly, oh, I want to become a writer someday, the first thing that they will tell you is that you won't earn any money in writing. So I guess, what are your opinions on, or what would you advise for parents who still have that mindset on not getting their kids into creative writing and publishing books? Sure. So, yeah. yeah. You want to go? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> those parents are right, though. Yeah. You can't lie about that. No, you can't lie. Oh. No. I, I, I but, totally disagree. No, but, but, but. So, you can still write. You can use creative writing. You can do. But 
you have to do advertising, copywriting. That's still writing, right? right? That's still writing. 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 But then on the and but what else? What another thing that you could do is you could have a job that just holds you down, um, and you know pays for your bills and do your writing on the side. I'm speaking from experience. Yeah. <laughs> okay. no, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, of course. <laughs> and, I, I, and then yeah. yes, I'm the same. I teach as well, right? Um, I was actually disowned by my father uh, because I want I ran away to become a writer and <coughs> politically also he didn't I didn't agree with him. I didn't like the way he was as a person and, and as a, a, a politician, and he didn't like my my values. I'm super mm. liberal, super whatever, and so I got disowned many years ago, and we didn't speak for many years. And in the end, you know, when he went, we never really reconciled so much, which is really sad. All because I wanted to become a writer, but I've found that writing has a long apprenticeship. Mm. It takes a long time to learn and to get out there, build a CV. Um, have, make opportunities to become a writer. Maybe make, may it take five, 10, mm. 15 years? Mm. How long does it take to become a doctor? Mm. How long does it take to become a lawyer? Mm -hmm. How long does it take to start a, a business that starts making profit? Yep. Yep. It also takes a long time. So I believe that yeah. there is a future yes. in writing, the you arts, yes. a lot yeah. of different yes. creative Agreed. professions. Mm. But it just takes a long time where you mm -hmm. have to hustle and yeah. you have to yes. have these Side yes, gigs and all of that. Yeah. It's after you've written like maybe your seventh book. That but maybe. I also yeah. want to say that you know I'm going to take a different perspective okay. because from from experience, no, a different perspective, yes. but yes. same yes, yes. landscape. I I consider myself a writer when I'm writing copy, right? I I still you mm -hmm. know the, my way out of of that question. You no, know, <laughs> what's going to happen to me if I end up being? I did, and you know I I made that decision a long time ago when I was in high school or grade school, and I never gave that decision up. But along the way, I became a writer in different forms. I, mm. I now own an ad agency. I own a digital agency as well. And it, it's, uh, it's the thing that pays the bills. Mm. No? Uh, I, I, uh, I write for movies, and I, I write. I employ writers now. In, in, uh, I own an SEO agency. And it's writing to me. Mm. You know? All of this is fed by just still the same thing, writing. Mm. So anybody who says you can't make money out of writing mm -hmm. is really seeing writing in a different, in a very constrictive way. Mm -hmm. The other aspect of it is that always remember that, you know, um, when you write, you're you're, you're writing to, to for posterity. You're not writing for an audience. You're not writing for for money. It's for posterity. You know, mm -hmm. that side of you that writes literary things, you know, like poetry or stories or books. Mm -hmm. you know? But you also wanna, I also wanna sort of look at writing technically. Mm. It is a skill. At the heart of it, it's a skill. Okay. And never has writing been so... Can you imagine that all of us at, on Facebook and Instagram, literally we're reading all day. We don't realize that, right? Mm. We're reading what people are writing all day. And people who write Facebook posts, they're literally writing stuff. Mm. Uh, people who monetize, are able to monetize their, their, uh, yeah. their pages, and, and, mm. right? And they're, they're making content. They're making content. That's mm. writing. If we see writing that way in a technical way, and if you see it in a very practical way, it doesn't mean you're giving up your literary way. It means mm. you're liberated enough to be able to devote this fantastic talent mm. toward a lot of different things. It, it, mm. it, it, in fact, you realize it enriches you, like mm. literally yeah. and figuratively. Yep. It can yep. enrich you. Yep. I became the novelist that I am now, artsy, whatever, yeah. or novelist. Because I worked, in, I, I worked in newspapers, yeah. just mm. churning it yeah. out. I learned more from writing yes. in a newspaper than I ever did yeah. studying yeah. it in school. So, you know, mm -hmm. the skill is there and you can, it, if you, you sharpen your tool, yeah. then you become good at it. And if you find joy in it, you won't give up. And then therefore you'll become excellent in it. Mm. And then you can prove your father wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we have one more question. I think we have uh, just a couple minutes left, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, so please. Um, Mabuhay and welcome to Dubai and UAE. I would like to start by saying congratulations to you, Miguel, Angelo, and Danabel. Of course, Danabel is from UAE, but you really brought the flag. And really, uh, I would like to congratulate also all the other participating authors and artists at the Lit Fest Festival. And thank you to the Emirates Festival of Literature for 
giving us this great opportunity really to focus on the Filipino writers and, Thank you. and authors. And my question is, I'm sure you, you will be in, in the same view uh, with me on this belief that in order for us to promote our culture in a global scale or an international arena, we should be having books that are that would have the Filipino language in it. Like what I mean yes. is, the book should be published in dual languages, like mm -hmm. the Filipinos and English, because this is how the way we do it here in the UAE. I agree. When they do books, there's an Arabic and English. Yes. Why first? Because you will reach a wider audience. And yes. at the same time, at any age, we have young Filipinos here, we have all Filipinos. They can relate to that because it's in our language. Mm -hmm. Yes. They get hold of those books of yours. That's and in which case, mas ano tayo, mas mobilis yung ating reach. Lalaki yung magbabasa, di ba? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, yan lang yung question ko. Why? Because I see that there's not many books in Filipino language. And that is one way of promoting our culture, really, is to have it not necessarily pure in our language, but let's have both sides of it. The English yes. And the Thank you. Language. If, uh, I just want to say that Miguel's book was just translated into Filipino by a writer, Chuck Berry Pascual. Chuck no? Berry Pascual. Chuck yeah, Berry. Yeah, you know, don't be surprised by the name Chuck Berry. My name is Sarge. He's Chuck yeah. Berry. Obviously, we're a very musical culture. Thank you. But uh, his, his, his book, Illustrator, was just translated. It's a very difficult book to read. I guess it's a thousandfold more difficult to write, uh, to translate. Mm. So it was translated. And translation is indeed you know, the, the sharp end of the sword when mm. it comes to cutting mm. through. You know, but, uh, audiences. But it took 13 years for it oh, to Oh, he started 13? Really? No, oh, yeah. no. Oh, yeah. it, it, he didn't start 13 okay, years yeah. ago. He started yeah. about two or three years ago. Yeah. It took 13 years for a Filipino yeah. publishing house to be interested mm. in it. Yeah. It was published in Japanese and Croatian before and all these other things. Was, <laughs> years yeah. before yeah. it was published in Filipino. And that always frustrated me. Yeah. But it's really a question of the market. Yeah. yeah. It's a question of market and the funding. Maybe the government can start to fund a, a little bit more because you're right. It, it's absolutely a great opportunity. Yeah. But also the market. Filipinos also need yeah. to buy these books Agreed. To, yeah. to support that. Agreed. I always said, oh, if every time a Filipino author in the United States, which, which is the l world's largest publishing market, if every Filipino in the, the, in the community there bought a Filipino novel whenever it came out, it would be a bestseller, mm. and all the all the American publishing houses, all the international publishing houses, would be would, begging would be begging for more Filipino writers. Yeah. But we don't support the community, yeah. unfortunately. So thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank to you support for that. coming. But yes, no, but it's a great moment because uh -huh. now we're finally translating work. No, uh -huh. it's a great moment in our culture. I, I think we're, we're almost we're out, I about out of time, yeah, but right Mr. Ambassador, yes, Alec, Excellency please. has a question. Yeah. Thank you. I'd like to first to address the lady. She really is writing <laughs> conjoined the diplomatic of the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Let's make sure you write the truth. Do you believe you're also writers or you need good writers? Yes. Anyway, absolutely. I raised this also this morning with Ambed uh, from his point of view as an historian. I related this, uh, this morning, uh, I've done this so many times before, I attended the anniversary of a Filipino school and these children from kinder to 10th grade, uh, they prayed, uh, the invocation was in Arabic, they sang the UAE national anthem, they had, they had a cheer like college cheer in English, they speak more in English and they're the global citizens here, especially in, here in UAE, yes, where it's very, you know, the, they're preaching openness, tolerance, everyone is welcome. And uh, you're, you're, you're going up, I don't know, maybe K-pop or uh, mm -hmm. whatever. So maybe I'd like to ask you, as maybe as a responsibility or as a mission, how would you, the second, even third generation children of all Ws, so how, how would you... They're also hungry for roots. They want yeah. to reconnect. Yes. But you know, they've grown um, more years out of the country yeah. than in Manila. And if they go home, then sila mag college, sometimes they get lost. Eh. So, what would be, what would be like a storyline for you for that Filipino growing uh, teenager mm. who grew up 10, 12 years here? Uh, uh, then he needs to go back now. 
how would you play that out and what would be the dana naman or how would that work? I'll just uh, quick I'll just I think it's a great quick opportunity quick for, uh, I just want to say, uh, multi art, the uh, multimedia mm -hmm. approach. No, I, I was talking to, I think Farah mentioned it yesterday. That, wow, alam mo yung Filipino contingent here, the Filipino community here is so attuned to hip hop, to rap. Mm -hmm. no, there's a real scene in terms of music. And music is literature, I consider it literature, mm -hmm. yes. especially rap. It's, it's really yeah, it's poetry. spoken literature, it's poetry. Mm -hmm. And I want to throw that now. It's, it's particular, the poetry is a story of a, of a mm. people. Mm -hmm. Talaga, no? uh, and uh, uh, there, are, there are forms mm -hmm. that uh, immediately connect. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose this is why also you chose poetry. Yes. No? Yes. It reflects the story and it speaks yes. to them. Yes, to and the I, I, more, I no? can be as vague as I want to be. And it's, it's uh, easy. Uh, I, must, I don't have to explain everything. You know, oh. in a story, sometimes you have to like explain everything. Where in poetry, I can just be like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm alluding to it. Yeah, music is like that. Too. So therefore, the, yeah. the these younger generations yes. can they respond to it. They yes, respond. they respond to it because oh. then, yeah, it's um, yeah, yeah. I think there are forms now like poetry. Mm. Uh, I would say the the short short story. No, mm. na, 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 flash lang. fiction. Oh, flash fiction. Yeah. Those are so uh, crucial in yeah. attracting audiences and writers. The story of the OFW, the story of the, the yeah. diaspora. Oh, sorry. Is going to be written by the diaspora itself. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I think that. And I, I, I believe yeah. making them proud to be Filipino, Agreed. making them feel welcome as Filipinos from wherever Agreed. their background is, uh -huh. um, and helping them find their voices yes. so that they can tell their own stories. Yeah. Um, yeah. That to me is yeah. is. But it's a great I moment. Think the, a great moment. The encouragement of them to be true to themselves, right? Not. They don't have to write like a Filipino from the Philippines, or they don't have to write like a Filipino from America, which is what, which is the representation that we yeah. all get. Yeah. Because that's the thing that's yeah. being, you know. Um, so just to be true to where you are, um, where you're located, um, is is important. Because then, you know, marami sila. Yeah, yeah. We need them. Our country yeah. needs them. The world needs them. Um, well, we're out of time, unfortunately. In fact, we're, we're well over time. I, 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 I excuse ourselves, call it Filipino time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll see you next but, year. It's the Filipino goodbye. Uh, <laughs> before you head off, there is a book signing session which will take place in the lobby. Um, I, and I would like to thank Danabel and Sarge. Thank you, Miguel. Um, I would like to thank, uh, thank you, you the audience. Thank you so much for coming. The AV team, uh, the volunteers, and um, our title sponsor, of course, Emirates Airline. Uh, our founding partner, the Dubai, uh, Dubai Culture, our parent organization, Emirates Literary Foundation, um, and uh, our representatives from, from the, uh, the Philippine embassies and, and, and consulates. Uh, and most of all, thank you, readers, uh, for sharing uh, in these stories. Um, thank you very thank much. You.